Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over the CSS units of measurement, viewport width and viewport height. OK, so I've got a basic page set up here with nothing of significance in the body of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and run down and create a just a couple of divs. OK, and just so we can see something happen relatively quick, I'll go ahead and say that my first div is going to have a background color of red. And let's go ahead and set a min height of 50 pixels. But what I want to check out is the width. I'm going to set the width to be 50 VWs. So this is viewport width. And whenever you put a number like that, that's going to be a percentage of the viewport width. So in theory, I'm saying that this particular div is going to have a width 50% of my viewport width, pretty much 50% of my visible space. So let me go ahead and save that, head back over to my browser and refresh. And we can see pretty clearly that, yep, OK, this red box does look like it is about 50% of my screen size. Now, my recording screen size here is set at uh, about 1280 pixels. So that's roughly what you're seeing. Now, you could be thinking, OK, well, why not just use um, 50%? And, and that could work also. But viewport width is going to give you a slightly better understanding for different devices at different widths. So let's see if I can size this really quick. So so yeah, so I'm getting a pretty clear understanding of, all right, I'm dealing with this percentage regardless of that device that's rendering it. So there's 50. And then just so I can see a quick little uh, copy of this, let me just, and I'll change up the second one a little bit. So for the width, I'll go ahead and set it to be 25 VWs. And I'm going to set the height And for the height, I'll set it as 10 VHs, or viewport height. So viewport width and viewport height. So let me go ahead and save that real quick. And we should have a pretty clear understanding of what to expect with this 25% uh, of width. But let's see what the height is going to do for us. And let me add this in also. Margin top, 20 pixels for now, just to give them a little separation. OK, so I'm looking at this second one. And you can start to see that, OK, it is a little bit taller, but it's hard to visualize, OK, well, what is that 10 VH really doing for me? Well, what if we made it 50 VHs? Now you could probably start to visualize, hey, yeah, maybe that is about 50% of the viewport height. What if it was 100? Which means I should be able to scroll so that it fills up that viewport height. So this could become a very useful tool in order to create these elements on your web page that are precisely filling or not filling the device that the person's using. And this is what we want to think of a little bit more often than pixels, because pixels have different kinds of recalculations or different kinds of interpretations in different devices. So pixels are sometimes a little bit sketchy to work with. Viewport width and height are nice because it's similar to thinking of elements in percentages. But viewport width and height is a little bit better because percentages are often going to be indicated by their parent. So if you have a, a child element inside of a parent element and you want it to be 100% or 50% or something like that, it's going to be based on that parent, which may be smaller than the viewport. So this gives us a little bit more control on controlling the width and height of elements based on the device being used. Now, there's a somewhat different element, or kind of a related unit of measurement too, of V min and V max. And basically, now we're talking about the viewport minimum and the viewport maximum. And that can be nice because the viewport minimum is going to go by whatever the smallest size is versus whatever is the biggest size. And I'll give you a quick example of that with my div 3 here. I'm going to actually change the height of this box back to something more manageable, like 10 VHs. And I'll go to div 3. And I'm going to say the height, 50 picks is fine, but I'll set the width to be 50 V min. I'm going to go ahead and save that, head back to my browser, and refresh. OK. 
Now, this is a little bit weird to look at, and you're thinking, wait a minute, that's not 50 of the width. It is definitely not 50 of the width. Since I used 50 V min, it's going to set to be 50% of the viewport minimum. Now, since my screen recording here on my browser is in a landscape mode, my height is smaller than the width. So this width is going to be 50% of the height. Very, very weird, but that's what's going on. Let's see if it stands out to us a little bit more. If I go over here and I put in 100. So now the width of this box should be the same as the height of my viewport. So I'll save that, head to my browser and refresh. And we'll just have to kind of do a little bit of trust on here. And I'm gonna create myself a fourth div. This one I will set the width to be 720 px, which I believe is my recording window. And let me head back to my browser and refresh. Ah, that's a little bit bigger just because 720 is my recording height, including all the way up at the top up here. But my viewport height is basically the, the part of the white for the browser. But anyway, pretty cool. And if I had changed this out to V max, well, in my landscape orientation, the maximum is going to be, or the bigger side is going to be my landscape. So this should fill up the screen. This would look the same 100 V max versus 100 VWs in this example. And there we go. And that stretches all the way across. So very cool. Um, definitely start to incorporate these units of measurement in your web development projects.